Amen. Let's please pray. Heavenly Fathers, we come to this time of uh, sharing your word. May you just bless this time. Yeah, may you speak clearly through me as it be your own voice and your own words. May you open our ears and our hearts and our minds to receive what you would have us to receive. And God, if there be anyone in our presence today, may your spirit move freely in a way to bring them to salvation. Anyone struggling with sin, that you bring them to conviction. And anyone in here that needs to be edified, Father, that you will just lift those things up over your congregation this day. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. amen. First of all, kids, if you're in here, I understand that there is a guest appearance. If you're really quiet and you're really good and you let me share the gospel with your parents right now, I think his name is Chewy. And he's going to show up after the gospel presentation if, if everybody's really good. That means adults too. So, Chewy, wherever you're at, make sure you're ready when I call you, okay? All right, with that, on a serious note, this week our kids have learned about Colossians chapter 1, 15, and 16. A lot of them have memorized that verse. Usually they just have to memorize like one little, one little stanza. This time it was the whole verse. And I'm going to preach on that and connect it to the God who knows you. Sometimes we can get lost. Pastor Joe showed us how there's this big universe last week, and there's this, this just, we can get lost in the midst of it all if you look at how great the galaxies and the universe is. But we're, even though we can get lost in that, God doesn't get lost in it. God can come down, and he sees you and sees how important you are to him. And this whole week, our kids have learned that that they're important to God, and if he made all of this big universe and all that we see with our eyes, that he can care enough for us that he sent Jesus. So today in Colossians chapter 1, it starts off with, he is the image of the invisible God. He is the firstborn over all of creation. What does that mean? That when you see Jesus, you see God. He is the very image. So even though God is invisible to us, we can't see him. God the Father, we can't see him. God the Spirit, he moves among us and lives in us and dwells in us. But Jesus, when we look to Jesus, we actually begin to see the essence of who God is in the flesh. Jesus lived a spotless life. In fact, John the Baptist said when he saw Jesus coming to be baptized, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. The Bible makes it clear to us that in Jesus, all the attributes of God exist. That in Jesus, he was spotless, he was sinless. And that Jesus took a sacrifice for you and me. He took our place. But beyond this, this text tells us that he created everything. In fact, John chapter 1 tells us that the word has always been from the very beginning. The word existed and was with God and the word was God. And all things were created by him. So we learn that Jesus is over everything and that our God rules. And if you're in here today and you think you're in control of your life, adults, I got something to tell you you're not. This past week, I learned that. Last Thursday, my daughter went into what would be a surgery that I thought she would get out of, and she would have to just recover, and she ends up fighting for her life in ICU. You know how quickly things can change? And how you have one thing in your mind and it's different. Now this is not to bring any praise to Macy Joy but to God alone. But she's sitting in the back here today. Amen. And I thank God that he wasn't done with her. And so uh, we can see our lives go before our eyes sometimes. And sometimes we can just go through the motions. And I think we need to step back and always remember that God's in charge. And that he is the creator of all things. And that we need to always remember that that's his place with us. We also know that everything was created by him. Everything in heaven and in earth. The visible and the invisible. This is my favorite part because I got to tell the kids. Searching the visible. Discovering the invisible. Now why don't the parents know that? It's right there in the text. Come on, if you have your Bibles open to Colossians chapter 1, it's right there. It's right on the screen if you don't have your Bible. God is so awesome that he created through Jesus everything in heaven and everything on earth. We may never see heaven until we're actually there. 
But everything in the spiritual realm, Jesus had a touch on. He had a part of. With the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, they created it. Everything that's on earth, everything. Not evolution. Not advancing through some missing link that we'll never find because it doesn't exist. Not from creating some ooze that got shocked by electricity that then created everything we see. No, by God, it got created. We have been so warped by our culture that we forget we have a creator God. We've been so warped in all of our thinking, even from everything in our culture that tells us contrary to that until we step down and have to come face to face with this. And parents and kids, come face to face with this. If God didn't create it all, then he's not the God of the scriptures. You can't place your faith in him for salvation. Either we believe everything that God created all the way through the point where it tells us he's coming back for us. Either we believe that the first tree was real and the middle tree where he died for us and the last tree will we all take of the tree of life if we know Jesus Christ. There's three trees that spell the whole Bible out. He created all three of them, you all. He created the tree that would make us fall, but he also created the tree that would redeem us, and he created the tree ultimately that would give us eternal life someday. That's a pretty awesome God, you all. Then in the midst of his creation, he saw everything and saw perfectly how it would all come together. The text goes on to say that even whether it was created by uh, thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, I can't always explain this, but God has it all in control, even when we think it's not in control. Even though we may not agree with who is or isn't in the White House or who leads Russia and who doesn't lead Russia or who is in charge of whatever, God is in control of all that. And in fact, it says it's for him. Now, I may not have it understood. I may not have it all figured out. And in fact, there are times I go, that's not right with God. And God's probably saying, you're right, it's not, but I'm still going to use it somehow. Guess what? And if you have any problems in your life and God still uses you, amen. So let's not forget that the God that created both the visible and the invisible, created heaven and earth, and created all dominions and all rulers and authority, they're all for him. Even though we may not understand it, we need to let God play out his plan in our lives. And ultimately what it means is that we come under his dominion. If we are under his dominion, then his kingdom prevails here on earth. If we're under his kingdom and his power as a church, then our church will thrive and do the things that Christ has called us to do. And it ends with this, saying that all things were for him and by him. There's nothing on this earth our kids learned. When you walk out and you see the trees, you should see God. When you look up and you see the stars and the moon or the sun, you should see God. How often do we think that way? Probably not. But the next time you go out and look, I want you to think that way. God made that. The next time you see, listen, the next time you see something that God did that's unique in, in nature, think God did that. The next time you eat a crab, God made that crab for you. Praise Jesus. Even though in the Old Testament they couldn't eat them. Thank God for the New Testament. Amen? God's amazing. And here's what it tells us in the text in the Psalms, that he has counted, he has formed, he has placed all the stars in the sky, and he knows them all by name. Imagine that. When's the last time you've looked up and really looked at a, a beautiful night of stars? Last night would not have been a good night, by the way. But you look up and you see it, and you're just blown away. And that's only what you can see with your eye. Even the greatest telescope cannot even begin to grasp how deep the universe is and how majestic God is and how many stars there are. You know, you can go buy a star and put your name on it now. Do you know that? But you know what? God's already named them. God's already named the stars. The Bible tells us that. Now, I personally believe that. Some of you may say, oh, David's just talking figuratively. No, I believe God hung the stars. When he spoke and it was, he hung them. And at the moment he spoke, he knew their name. That's the God that I know. And how about this? The God that I know knows this, that he knows every hair on your head. And he says that he knows if a sparrow dies, and if a sparrow falls and dies, surely you're worth more than that sparrow. 
If God can know the names of the stars, and even though I may not know all of your names in here, he knows your name. He knows everything about you, and he cares for you. And the Bible says it for like this in Romans 5, 8. While we were yet sinners, yet while we were separated from God, guess what God did? He demonstrated his love for us, and he sent Jesus to die for us. While we were in the act of separated from him, God made a way so that we could know him. If you're in here today, maybe you've struggled with faith, maybe, you, maybe you've been raised a long time ago, your parents made you go to church and you've kind of walked away and now your kids are of that age and you're like, well, we should kind of take them to vacation Bible school. Then I'm glad you're here. Maybe you're in here and you've been doing church for a long time, but you, you've missed this, this feeling and this sense that God truly intimately knows you is in a relationship with you. Then today I have good news for you. He's here, he cares, and he wants you to get to know him. And how do we do that? Well, if you already know Jesus, you're already in a relationship with him. Like anybody else, you just need to start talking with him, hanging out with him, reading his words, seeing the world differently, seeing the, eye, the world through his eyes. But if you're in here and you've never experienced Jesus, this is not just a moral teaching that I'm teaching today. I believe something supernatural can happen in your life. And just like God named the stars, he can save your soul. And how we do that is we must do something that the kids learned all week. It's called ABCs. Every single one of you, if you can read and write in here, you learned your ABCs. Well, we break it down to the kids this way. You must admit to God that you're a sinner you must believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that he died on the cross for your sins and that he was raised from the dead, and that if you place your faith in him, he'll save you. And then you need to confess him. Confess him as Lord and Savior over your life and confess him to other people. If you have done that in some similar way, at somewhere you made that decision, then that's what we call you become a believer or a follower of Jesus. Let me tell you, if you all are a follower of Jesus, people should see that in your life. Just like you can see the stars at night, and you know God put them there, they should, God, God's presence should be seen in your life. Let me give you an example of this. Here we are, we leave the hospital. I told you that was a very trying time for us. And we leave the hospital, and Macy Joy's finally starting to eat, and she says, I want to go to Chick-fil-A. Because Chick-fil-A and Jesus just go hand in hand, amen? That's just, I mean, when he, when he created the universe, he was thinking, you know, in the 21st century, I'm going to create Chick-fil-A. So we go to Chick-fil-A, and I walk up to the counter. And this girl's behind the counter. You know, they're always polite there, right? It's my pleasure. You know, thank you. It's my pleasure. You know, but this girl says, you're a believer. I'm like, what? And she saw Shawnetta up there with me and, and saw Macy Joyce sitting over there. You're a believer. And I'm like, how in the world? It's like, does she kind of glory on my face or something? What's going on here? And she goes, well, I saw your shirt. I was wearing my VBS shirt. And then she saw Shawnetta's shirt, and Shawnetta was wearing a monkey shirt that says, you think this is my ancestor? <laughs> and she goes, that is so awesome. It's so good to see believers coming to Chick-fil-A. And then I said, it's my pleasure. <laughs> you know what, right now, God would love to have you come up and say, Lord, I need you in my life. And you know what he's gonna say? It's my pleasure. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, if there's someone that needs to make a response in here today, I pray that you speak to their hearts. I pray that you open their hearts to you right now to receive you, to, to not have the world get in the way, to not have their ideology or their thoughts or their beliefs but to say in this moment, Jesus, you are real. And I wanna begin that relationship with you by admitting my sin and believing in you and confessing you. And Lord, for the rest of us in here that have already made that decision and maybe we're struggling in life or maybe we're living life good and we just need to be lifted up and, and know that we're walking right with you, then God, you just encourage us this day to respond to you as you would want us to respond. May we be found faithful May we be found sincere and genuine before you in this moment. We pray this in Jesus' name.